So I was thinking, what is the best possible MySQL tutorial I can put out there today? Today, the most popular language is Python for the backend. Uh, it's growing a lot, specifically for databases. It's growing a lot more because it's the language for machine learning and data science and all those things. So this is, for me, the lowest possible amount of code that you, that you need to do to connect to a SQL database. Actually, I'm going to show you here the solution right away. This is it. I'm going to be explaining these four steps. From the beginning, we're going to be creating a database in Heroku. It's an official platform, like a platform that is probably used in the professional world. We're going to be using MySQL or MariaDB, that it's a, the, one of the most important um, database engines in the world. And we're going to be doing everything following all the possible best practices that you could find in, in, uh, in the industry. So I hope you guys like it. So I think it's a good idea to start by explaining some concepts just for the people that don't know much about SQL. If you know a lot or if you're comfortable with it, I recommend you jump uh, for the next couple of minutes. Um, if you still want to go over it with me, it will reinforce all the concepts you need for the exercise. So basically, uh, SQL was, was created by IBM in the 80s and it's a language that is only meant for querying data, right? So for example, if I have a, a document like this, a uh, spreadsheet in Google in uh, Google Spreadsheets, in, uh, or in Microsoft Excel, with columns with name, last name, birthday. Wait, this is a, a very common case when you're working with data, right? You have CSVs or spreadsheets with a lot of information. You can consider that spreadsheet to be a table in a database, and a table has columns similar to how a spreadsheet has columns. So basically. Uh, SQL database is a bunch of spreadsheets. You can think about it like that. And then how, how those spreadsheets connect with each other? Well, basically, let's say that I have a, a spreadsheet that contains all the information of every taxpayer in the, in the United States, and then I have another spreadsheet with all the declarations that they did. They connect with each other because obviously you can pay only once every year the taxes. So you can have on one worksheet in one Google's uh, or Microsoft Excel spreadsheet, you can have all the information about the taxpayers. And then in another one, you can have all the declarations that they did. And how would you connect them? Well, it could be by the social security number. So you need, if you have two tables, you need, in the first table, you need to have some kind of identification for that user, right? Imagine this is the user or the taxpayer. So you need to have some kind of identification. So you would put probably an ID. And the ID could be the social security number, or it can be the email if you don't want to, if you want the email to be unique per user. And in this side, you're going to have the user ID. Imagine this information is the, um, the declaration. So that's how the user connects with the declaration, because in the spreadsheet where the ID of the user is, it has to match with the other spreadsheet or the other Excel or Microsoft spreadsheet it has to match so for example if i have the user one with the name alex in this side i would have the user id one with the amount four thousand for example and that's how i know that if i want to know the details of user one i cannot retrieve them from this table right from this spreadsheet this spreadsheet is only concerning declarations. So it's gonna only be about amounts and things like that. But this table is about the user. So I can go ahead and say, okay, the user one, I wanna know the first name. So I would have to go and look for the first name from this table. That's basically what a SQL database is. It's a bunch of tables connected to each other by IDs. And then all the rest of the information in that table, all the other columns are gonna be whatever you need to store about that scope of information. In this case, the scope is the user. In this case, the scope is the declaration. Okay, so continuing with that concept, if you want to create a new table or a new spreadsheet, this is the syntax. So you will say create table if not exists, and then the name of the table, and then the columns that it's going to have, and the data types, integer, varchar, that means string, basically, timestamp, that makes 
it means dates and time. So a moment in time is including the date and the time. And then you're going to specify what, which is the prim primary key for a table. Every table must have a primary key. You can alter tables as well like this, and you can drop tables. I recommend strongly the SQL Bolt exercises to get used to doing SQL sentences, creating tables, inserting, updating. So I'm going to take it here for, for a second. Let me see. It's not opening. Let me pause. Okay, so I just I was able to load finally with my e crappy internet. I was able to load the exercises. So these are super cool because they're interactive. And you can hear, say, anything. For example, here is asking me to find the title of each film. So I'm going to say select title from movies. That's it. This is the title of each film. And then after I finish, it's going to check mark it. You see here, it's, it's validating already. And I can now find the director of each film. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assume there it is, the column director. So I'm just going to put director here. And there it is. I finished the second one. And then you can continue. You click here where it says finish above tasks when it, it's done and it's going to take you to a, a more difficult exercise. It's incrementing little by little. I think it's the most amazing tutorial you can do if you want to get used to is SQL. But that being said, let's start with the tutorial. So I recommend you come here to this URL and then you fork this tutorial so that you can have your own copy using your own github repository if you don't know what a fork is basically it's like a copy of the original you can see here that it says forked from so you i now have a copy of the tutorial but in my own github and that's important because if tomorrow someone deletes the original one you still keep the copy and then if you don't have this button for Gitpad, i recommend you search in google for the Gitpad extension because this is amazing because it will allow us to start working right away and we don't have to do any setup whatsoever we don't have to install Python, we don't have to install MySQL, anything like that. And it's gonna do it almost instantaneously. Sometimes it takes a while, but the majority of the time it's pretty fast. So here we are. There is an instructions here. So let's open those instructions. Let me deal opening them like a preview so that we can read about them. And then we're gonna start following all the steps. First, we're gonna create a cloud database using Heroku. So if you don't know what Heroku is, Heroku is a hosting site similar to Amazon or Amazon Web Services or to Google Cloud or any of those. Um, this is the one I like the most. I think it's amazing for junior people um, for several reasons that I, I, I don't want to list right now because we're in the middle of another tutorial, so not for that one. But you're going to create an account here. You're going to click on sign up. It's free. It may ask for your credit card, but it's not going to charge anything. I don't think it asks for a credit card yet. It's going to ask for it later when you do, when you um, create the database. But for now, I already have my credentials, so let me log in and I'll come back. Okay, so I am in and um, I have a list of applications that I have created here. You're going to have this list empty. It's going to say personal here for you. And you can click here on new and then create new app. This is an application that it's going to contain your database inside. So we can call it, for example, database database example whatever right it's already taken obviously but let's say 23 cool no one has there's no 23 database examples and then i'm going to hit here create app this is going to create an application and then all we care about in these applications is the database we don't care about the actual application we're, we're, we can deploy this later we can deploy it and actually share it online with your mom or with your dog if you want but we're not going to be doing that. We're going to be just creating the database. So for now, we want to go here into the resources or into the overview, my bad. And we want to add an add-on here. So configure add-ons. And then you're going to search for, let me put this down. Yeah. You're going to search for MySQL. There are plenty of services offering MySQL. I recommend JawDB because it's the one I use. And it works. So I don't like to recommend things that I haven't tried. It's free. Like I told you, it may ask for the credit card. You can put the credit card and it's not going to charge anything because you're choosing the free plan. It's impossible that it will charge. The only way is that if you choose another one. But if you choose this one, instead of charging you, it will stop working if you exceed the limitations. It will never charge. Okay, so submit the order form. It's going to create a database for you. And after it, it is done, you can click here on this service at the bottom and it will show you the credentials for this database. So here they are. Um, 
I have a host, a username, a password, a port, and a database. This is the essential, like the most basic information you need to connect into a database. So just to explain an extra concept here, a database, it's separated from your computer. Like if you have a computer, let's say that this is a CPU tower, a, co a server computer, the database runs in a separate computer, always. Well, not always, you can make it run in the same one, but it's not recommended. So let's say that a, a client of yours, like a, someone, a user, wants to run a Python script that connects to a database. This is a laptop, right? And it, it's running Python. So when I run the Python script, it will connect into a server that inside, let's say that this is a server as well, a CPU tower. This is a CPU tower that inside has the database. Okay? So I will need, that's why I need so much information to connect to it. I need the host that is basically a URL that it points to that server. It's in the internet, so that's why it's a URL. It's not an IP address. So this is the URL where this server is located. Let me make it sm in caption, small. This is the URL. It's a domain name. Look, it's horrible, but it's still a domain name. And then I also need, I also need a username and a password, a port and a database name, because you can have several databases in the same server. So I could have here in this server, I could have another database here and another database. That is more common actually. You can have, and it's normal to have several databases in the same server. So for example, maybe this database is a database from a business that I have, it's a car dealership. And then this one, it's for a school that I have. So I would pay for one server, but still use it for several databases. So I will use the same host, but the database name will change. So you do have to remember that these are the credentials for connecting to any database, okay? And this, not for any, like for mine, but I, what I mean is the host, the username, and the password, you always need those, those that information. But if you're not gonna connect to mine, it's these credentials here. I'm gonna delete it later, so don't worry. It's not gonna work for you. But we need that. So if we come here, we already finished all these steps in the tutorial. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start doing the Python code, right? I'm going to explain a little bit this template structure. So basically, um, when I was thinking about how to do this in a professional way, I was thinking, okay, we need, obviously we need a requirement of TXT because the requirement of TXT is always a file that in Python you use when you want to, um, it's a package manager. So if you search about peep, Python peep, peep is a package manager that it's to use libraries from third-party code. Okay, so this is pip. Pip, basically, you can search here, for example, if I wanna connect to my SQL, I can put here my SQL and it's gonna list me all the all the libraries or the useful tools that I can use to connect to my SQL. I am gonna be using one that is called SQL Alchemy. It's the most popular one, by the way, and it's the most used in the industry. So if you look for SQL Alchemy, it's gonna show you like all the things that are uh, related to SQL Alchemy, but the one in particularly that I want to use is the official one, that it's this one probably. It's a database abstraction library. Yeah, it is this one. So when you use several packages in a project like this, when you use several packages, you need a requirements of TXT to remember which packages did you use. Also, because that way you can say like this, you can say pip install requirement minus R, my bad, minus R, let me make this bigger so that you can see it. Yep. Minus R requirements. Let me make this bigger as well here. And let me make this shorter here. Amazing. So pip install minus R requirements dot txt. What that will do is that it will install all the packages needed for the entire project. So it will install SQL Alchemy, that is the one that I was referring to. It will also install PyMySQL, Pandas, and Python.env. If you don't know what these packages are, don't worry, I mean, for this pro project in particular, I chose them for you, but you can actually Google them and you will understand. Like Pandas is very popular. It's the most used uh, library for dealing with big chunks of data in Python. .env, I do want to explain that one because it's super cool. And it's because 
when we are connecting to a database, you don't want to have your, your the, the code, these credentials that I that I created here, these ones. I don't want to have them in my code. Like, let's say that I want to I want to copy these credentials, right? If I put them here, let's say that I. Uh, by the way, this here that's it's called connection string. This is basically the same credentials, but you can see that they are the same. Look, this, it's here. This, it's here. This, it's here. This, it's here. And this one, it's here. So this string here contains all your credentials in one simple string. And it's, it's a, a very good practice to have that, that we call the connection string. So if you put this here and you call it connection string and you paste it like this as a string, that's that's going to be a very bad practice because if tomorrow I commit this code, if I say here git add, so if I commit this code and I say git add dot git commit to commit it into GitHub, I will be committing my my password and my user and everything. So hackers will be very happy about it. If you want to avoid that, we're going to use this library that I was referring to that it's called python.env. It's super cool. It's broadly used. You need to learn it if you want to be a serious Python developer. This is going to allow you to create a separate file that you're going to call the .env that is never included into the GitHub repository, and you're going to put it there. So I'm going to call it connection, let's say db connection. So this db connection is the same string that I had. Here it is. I paste it here. But now... You can see that it has a U here that it's updated. Well, I don't want that. I don't want to include it in the repository. So I, I better create a git ignore to tell git to ignore my .env file. And I want to also tell it to not ignore the git ignore. Actually, I want to, I want to ignore all the files that start with a dot. That's a better idea. All the files that start with a dot. So when I do that, you can see how the .env, .env doesn't have the U anymore, and that's because it's not included in the repository. It's not going to track changes anymore. So even if I do git add commit push, and I upload this code to GitHub, my env file will still not be there. So that's great because then I can remove this from here, and in my code, instead of putting the actual credentials, I'm going to put, I'm going to import OS, and then I'm going to say OS. Dot get env and then I'm going to put the variable name that it's db connection and that's it it's going to get it from the env file so I, it's like I have the string here but I don't really have it I, I didn't put it in the code I brought it from the env so that's super cool because it avoids sharing sensitive information with hackers or with anyone basically so once I have my connection string well by the way there is a here if you want to read more about it, you can say python.env and you're going to find the documentation. It's very straightforward, basically. So after you install it with pip, you have to do these two lines of code here. I have to do them, by the way. I didn't do them. So let me put them here. So the first one is importing .env and the second one is loading the environmental file here, this env file. It's loading it so that I can use it. Okay. Let's actually test if it works. I'm gonna print the connection string just to make just to make sure that it works. Now I'm gonna say here Python source app.py. You see how it printed? Here it is. It printed. So that means it's loading it perfectly from my environmental file, my environment file. Okay, so I'm gonna delete this print. And then the next steps as uh, are shown here in the in the app.py or in the instructions, it says here that I have to, give me a minute because it's scrolled somehow, I don't know why, here. Understand your project template structure. So this structure that we have here, it has the EMB file, the git ignore. This gitpod yml is something about gitpod. Uh, actually, you don't need that, you can delete it if you want. We don't need it. The instructions is what we're reading, actually. The learn.json is something that I use in every tutorial of mine, uh, just to some meta metadata about the tutorial, so you don't need that either. The readme, it's, it's what shows up on github.com, so it does, you don't need it either. The requirement of txt, I already explained, is all the requirements that the project has. But then we have the source folder, and this is a very good practice, 
this is where you're going to put all your code all the time. Like try to have a source folder in all the projects you do. It's a very good practice and all your code should always be inside that folder. The assets here are just images that we needed for the tutorial. Like for example, when you're reading the instructions, there are some images there. Um, when you're reading the instructions, not this, the instructions, this, you're going to see how the instructions, the images are here. These images are being put here in this assets folder. So you don't need it either. All you need is a source folder and inside here's the solution by the way. And this is the app.py that I'm doing. Okay. So that's a project structure. It's very simple. So now after reading about the project structure and understanding it, we're going to proceed and, ah, well, there's another folder here. They call the SQL folder. It has the, the sentences that I want to run in SQL. So for example, I want to create a table called publishers. I want to create a table called authors. And I want to create another table called books. Remember that these are like Excel spreadsheets. So I'm going to have a list of publishers, a list of authors and a list of books and a list of book authors. This is the same. This is the sentences to delete those tables if we need. And this is data that we can use to feed into the database, like actual, actual authors, actual books, actual publishers, right? So let me close these three files. And that's, that's it for the project structure. So now I have to install the dependencies that I already did when I run the, the pip install minus R requirements of TXT. And the last part is to, well, not the last part, but almost the last part is to add my database credentials. I already did that by putting here a connection string. And then I also want to want to connect, right? So the code for connecting is this one here. It's only two lines of code, actually. It's this two, these two lines here. So I'm going to copy them. And I'm going to connect to the database like this. Um, you can see that it's it's a method that you have to import from SQL Alchemy. So you say from SQL Alchemy import create engine, and then you pass the connection string to it, and it's connected already. Like when you say engine dot connect. After you do that, let me put this inside this step because that's what it is. It is a part of that step. So this comes here. This comes here. This comes here. Yes. So let me move this down here. Perfect. So this is the connection. Now I can execute any sentence into my database. So for example, I could say that I want to add some tables, right? So for that, we have to use the other method, the other, um, method that is called, I think it's engine.execute. So let me, let me do it here. I'm going to say engine.execute. Execute will run any SQL code. Like for example, creating a table like this one. So let me create a table publishes first. So when in Python, when you want to have a string that has multiple lines, you have to put three quotes, three double quotes instead of just one else. Like if I want to have only one string with one, line it's like this but if i want to press enter and keep adding lines then i have to start with three quotes okay so i'm going to put the three quotes and then i'm going to paste my string and there it is i'm creating i'm executing this sql code inside the my sql engine that i have here let me run this and see what happens so if i say now again python let me do it again python source app.py it says no module name MySQL DB. So that means that I have to do pip install MySQL DB. Let's see if it works. Could not find a version that satisfies the requirements for MySQL DB. Version known. Okay, let's test it. Okay, one more thing. Uh, in the connection string, I want to use, uh, I was referring here in the, in the, um, requirement of txt that we were going to use by mysql okay so to use this we have to go into the connection string and we put mysql plus by mysql and that's how we're telling the computer that we want to use mysql but also that we want to connect with this library okay that's an important step it was giving me this pip install error because it didn't find the model but now that i put that there maybe it's gonna work let's see Yep, it seems that it's working. And it didn't give me any output, but that's good news because it means that there was no error. So it was able to connect and then it was able to add the publisher's table. 
So if I run this again, I would assume that I have an error because I will recreate the publisher's table and I don't want to recreate it, right? I, it's already created, so it's going to give me an error. There it is. You see it's saying table publisher already exists. So this is all good news. I wanted this error. That means that I was able to connect into my database and I was able to create the table publishers. And when I was explaining about the at the beginning of the video, I was showing that you can put here if not exists. This is a good practice. Create table if not exists. That way it will not give me an error the second time. So create table. Uh, let me double check here again. If not exists and then the name. Okay. So create table if not exists and then the name. Let me try again and it should not give an error anymore. Let's see. There it is. Now it's never going to give me an error. So because it's only going to create a table if it does not exist. And now I can start inserting data into that database. Um, let me put some publishers. So I have these publishers right here. So let me copy them. I'm going to put them here. And then I'm going to add those publishers. So let's do it. One, two, three. Boom. No error. Yeah, it gave an error. It's saying you have an error in your SQL. Check the syntax that corresponds to line number two. So I'm assuming publishers a book apart. It gave the error on this one, a book apart. So I'm assuming that it did execute the first one. Let's try. I'm going to do a select now. Let me comment this line and let me comment this other one as well. And I'm going to do now the last part of the exercise that is to connect uh, using read SQL function in pandas. Okay, uh, that's what's part of the instructions here. It says, let me open the preview again. After connecting and running the, the code, it's telling me to use here, use pandas to print one of the tables as a data frame using read SQL function. Why is this so cool? Because pandas is this amazing library that you have to deal with big amounts of data. So this line of code right here, P PD is pandas, right? I'm importing pandas on the top here. You can see that, see that it has import pandas as PD. So pandas will convert, will convert the entire database in something called, in something called a um, data frame. What is a data frame? A data frame is basically the equivalent of a spreadsheet, but in Python. So once I have a spreadsheet in Python, I can manipulate that spreadsheet similar to how you would do it with your hands or with the mouse in an Excel spreadsheet. Like I can delete columns, I can add columns, I can merge columns, I can do whatever I want. It's like, it's like having Excel in Python commands. So that's why Pandas is so cool. And that's why I would choose Pandas as the best tool to be able to retrieve the information from this database. So pandas has a function already that it receives the engine. So the engine is what I created here. Remember the create engine. It will receive that and it will let me do some queries, some SQL queries to retrieve information. So here, instead of books, I want to do publishers because I do remember that that's the one I created. So I'm going to say select asterisk from publishers and then I'm going to print that data frame. So let's see what happens. There it is, it's telling me that I have no data. It's an empty data frame. Okay, let me try to insert only one publisher then. I'm gonna uncomment this line here and this one. I'm gonna delete this, this ones here and let's try to execute again. And hopefully this time it works. And yep, look, I was able to insert the publisher and then I printed the data frame. So if I comment this line, if I comment it out and I run only the connection at the top, this connection, and then I run the, the, the query from pandas, it'll show me again the list of publishers that I have. I only have one publisher. If I want to insert another publisher, I can just come here and add the second publisher like this. I will add the second publisher, execute, and you can see here that if I run it again, it's going to show me two publishers now. There it is, a book apart and really media. 
And now you can use pandas for whatever you want. Like pandas is super cool to do some some uh, queries wherever I want. For example, I could say that I want to describe this table, right? So I would say head. If I do the data frame that head, let me comment this line that inserts and I'm going to comment the print. I'm only doing the, the query from, from uh, SQL. Like I'm retrieving the publishers and then I'm using the head function to describe a little bit what was brought from the, oh, I have to print it maybe. What was brought from the table. It's okay, so I'm printing it now. So let me do it again. And here it's telling me the head is basically going to give you a little bit a little information on the first five rows. But if I do describe, it's going to give you the information that it uh, more data about the information. So look, it's telling you how many publishers do you have? Two. And then additional information that in the world of statistics you usually care about, like the, med the mean, the median, blah, blah, blah. So that was it, guys. That's how you connect to a SQL database. Now you can do all the operations you want. You will basically uh, keep executing more more things like this or retrieving information from it and then displaying it however you want. Hope you guys like it. Good luck.